Hi, y'all. I'm Hannah. Hi, I'm Holly. Hi, I'm Marie. Hi, I'm Kayla. Hi, I'm Ann. And we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! <laughs> hey, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Hello and good day, mates. <laughs> we are so glad you're here for our Koala Mates live tutorial and fundraiser. So happy Wednesday. And if you are just joining in, if you're watching the live show now, say hi and where you're from. Hey, and if you're watching the playback, just go ahead and do the same thing. We love seeing where you are. We already have friends in Canada. We have friends in, what do you say, Scotland? Scotland. And and no. Where else? There were somewhere else. Yeah, anyway, around the world, <laughs> you're everywhere. We're here, and we are so glad you are here today. We've all been super busy getting ready for this day, and we're so grateful for you to be here with us. And we even have some show and tells by the fairies. So we are going to say hi to, hi to a few people, and then the girls have some stuff to show you. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. Coolio. <laughs> all right, we're going to get started, y'all, right away. Today, and thank you so much for joining us. So this is our live show. This is what we like to do about once a week is have a tutorial. Today is a very special day because you're kicking off our Koala Mates fundraiser with the, um, the tutorials absolutely free. We're not going to ask you for any money or any direct donations, but the gals are going to show you the kit that we're working from today, and 100% of the proceeds during this fundraiser are going to the World Wildlife Federation in Australia and I know many of you have already got your kits or ordered them and we just thank you so much for participating in that so let's say hi to some folks and I'm gonna see um, some of you here there's Nancy is in North Carolina I see Carol's in Florida um, I see um, Oh, there's Chris in Texas, says hi, y'all. Marianne is in Australia. Hey there, thank you so much for joining us. Stacy in Bend, Oregon. So many of you here with us today. Thank you so much for joining us. So we're gonna jump into our tutorial in just a moment, but first up, who's up is Miss Hannah has a little share with you for today. Thanks, y'all. Hi, everybody, how are y'all doing today? So I'm just going to do a little sneak peek at some of the fibers that we're using in today's tutorial. And the fiber I'm showing y'all is something I'm sure you're familiar with, our signature fiber which is going to be the MC1 batting. These two colors that we use for the koala are going to be willow and coal. So willow is a fun color, it is in our earth tones family but a lot of people do enjoy using it for um, some natural grays so that's a fun color to use for anything like a koala or elephant or something along those lines and then we've got coal which is going to be our next darkest color to the black it's very similar to the black it is a little bit lighter but it's a great substitute for maybe say you don't want such a harsh black in a project that you're working on the coal is going to be perfect for something like that the MC1 is a batting, so it's going to be a short, crimpy fiber. And you'll see that it's got long staple links and some short staple links. And uh, it's just great for any kind of needle felting or wet felting project. It's great for needle felting if you want a smooth, even finish on your felted project. So that's that. And then Holly's going to jump in here and show y'all another fiber. Thank you, Hannah. Hi everyone, so to jump off of Hannah, we have the NZ Coriadale, we have a natural medium and the natural light and these two fi this fiber has a longer staple length so you can see here, so we're going to use that to finish off some of the top coat of the koala and uh, probably his fuzzy ears. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I think we're, we have a... Uh, I can talk. <laughs> Anne! Yeah. Anne Kayla! <laughs> Thank you, Thanks, Holly. <laughs> and we do have a kit that will have all the fiber needed to, to make, koala, make your koala mate from either today or next week's broadcast. So this is, this is a really fun kit. Core wool, thigh wool, all the fixings. <laughs> And glass eyes, yeah. yes. Two different sizes, so you'll have some options for deciding which one you want to make. Oh, very <laughs> cool. Does it come with the pin in there, too? It the does, little... it does, and it's got a magnet. Lots of fun oh, options. Oh, so many cool things you could do with it. Yes, it's 
cute. We can't wait to what, <laughs> we can't wait to see what y'all are gonna create. Mm -hmm. And yeah. for this broadcast, I have been brushing up on my koala knowledge or koala. No, wait, well, are you sure you're qualified for that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. But um yeah. <laughs> always with the puns. Always. <laughs> Did you know that koalas mainly feed on eucalyptus, and out of the 100 different species that grow in Australia, they only eat 12. That's crazy. It is. Slim pickings for those mm -hmm. poor guys. <laughs> they also can eat up to one kilogram of leaves per day, and they sleep for up to 18 hours, which sounds awesome. Yeah, that sounds like life goals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they also have two opposable thumbs on each front paw. So that's pretty cool. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you now my fun fact. Right. You know what sound the grape made when it was stepped on by the koala? What sound of grape? No. I have no idea. It didn't make any, but it let out a little wine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> my bad joke for the day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kayla. Yeah, anytime. Alrighty, thanks, y'all. Be sure to stick around. At the end, we're going to draw some fun prizes. And so to get your name entered for one of those prizes, just make sure to leave a comment. Awesome. We'll see you soon. Thanks, gals. <laughs> Thank you, and yay for the fairies, aren't they fun? Y'all, thank you so much for being here for our tutorial. I saw one question posted already, and it asked, would we tell, talk about the difference between using a long staple and a short staple in our projects? Um, the thing that's fun about the MC1 batting and why we like it for needle felting so much, it is a short staple. It's very short and it's crimpy, and that means it's very easy to needle felt and compact down without it looking hairy. When you have a longer staple length, it tends to be a little unwieldy like to get everything to lay down but a longer staple length is going to be great for where you're wanting more a furry look now people do needle felt sculptures with this um, because they like the coarseness sometimes because they like the color and you can even wet felt with it and it makes a really great stiff wet felt but just think about that staple length you know when you're trying to tame something this long it's just going to take more effort for you to get all these fibers entangled and mashed together so that's one of the reasons we like the MC1, a real nice short staple length. And we've dyed it in what we call the colors of life. So a lot of the colors emulate something that we would normally see in the natural environment. Not all of them, but a lot of them. <laughs> so these two go really well together, even though one's dyed and one's natural. So cool. All right, friends. Well, we are going to jump in today's project. So let me show you what we're making. Today we are making our little koala head pin. And this can be a pin or a necklace with the kit. If you choose to get the kit, it's going to have two pin backs in it and they have the little necklace bale so if you want to make it hang you can do that and it also comes with a magnet so you can make it a magnet now um, next week we'll make the pin that I'm wearing and I, I don't know if that shows up where you are but this was the original project that I was going to do for the fundraiser is just this little guy but I found that I really had a challenge making the head and so began the koala head study which turned into <laughs> this guy so it's it's a lot of fun to make a koala head. It's a great opportunity to do a study. We're going to look at some real koalas as well, and hopefully that'll help you. And so you can use, if you do get the kit, you can use it to make um, this guy today or a couple of them or a combination of the two. Yeah? Cool. All right, so make sure, now listen, if you have never needle felted before and you're watching live and you've just stumbled across this crazy thing that we're talking about, give us a hashtag and it's just hashtag never felt it just put that in the comments hashtag never felt it if you have never felt it before and for all of our friends who have already picked up a kit thank you so much for contributing to this cause so if you would put hashtag koala mates during the broadcast anybody anytime you get a kit and we'll know that you got it going on okay so we are going to um i'm going to get in sit down here with you all so we can needle felt some koalas all right, and the gals showed you the supplies. Oh, I thought I already, oh yeah. The gals already showed you the supplies. So we are working with our MC1 in Willow, but we're gonna start with the core wool 
roving. We have core wool in batting and roving, and the only difference is the roving comes in these long strips already. So if you're needle felting 3D sculptures, it can be really nice just to reel. It comes in a bag, so you can just reel it out of the bag. So we're going to get started here. If you think, if this project looks fun for you, be sure just to give us a like, hit the thumbs up. You can hit the bell to subscribe to get notified, but give us a like and let us know if you think you're going to make one too. I'm going to turn us overhead now so that we can get started on our project. Here we go. Okay, so here's our little model. Here's our little guy that we're shooting for. We're making our koala mate today. Good day, mates. And we're going to start with our core wool. Now this is a half ounce bundle more than I can show you. This is a half ounce in my hand right here and it's very long. It's like a couple of feet long. We're going to start uh, with what I've weighed out is about um, six grams I think. It's about six, I think it's four to six grams, but it's just about this much. So it's about as long as my arm and about this big. And for those of you who do ounces, it's about two tenths of an ounce. The first thing we're going to do is just make a ball or a mound and we want to do it really tight. So I just start rolling like this and if you press all the air out then it will be much easier to needle felt. Press all the air out as you roll. Now, as you roll, you can tack it down to some degree. If you use something like our core wool batting, um, you'll find that it kind of holds on to itself. It's a little bit easier than some of the longer staple lengths. This is called CW1. I said batting, but this is the roving. Um, it's all the same. Like I said, this is just a strip of batting, essentially. But you can tack it down a little bit if you want as you roll. And again, I'm pressing very hard, so a lot of you already know how to needle felt. We're just going to make a ball, and we're going to make it, this one, I'm going to make it like about that big. Not too much bigger than that. I'll show you here in just a second. Is this a good project for beginners? I think this is a great beginner project, because first of all, we're going to take you through all the steps, and you really can't get it wrong. I mean... You know, we designed this uh, project with the mind that, one, yes, if you do choose to get a kit from us, and you certainly don't have to, you know that you're already donating to the cause. I'm going to needle felt this down. Two, if you are looking for a way to raise money for the cause, you can make these and sell them and donate some portion of your proceeds to whatever organization or cause speaks to you. So many people have been impacted by the brush fires in Australia and animals and land. And land was already an issue for the koalas um, from tree clearing. So the reason we chose the WWF is because in Australia is because they contribute to reforestation as well as caring. They help give money to other organizations as well that are doing good in the area. And they represent uh, like a handful of species that need help in Australia. So we chose them as our organization and you could give to any that you like if you feel inspired. Okay, so when you get, now notice that I'm needle felting all around. If you're brand new, that's what you want to do is don't stay in one place. You want to needle felt the whole thing all the way around and then we're going to start to flatten one side and make one side rounded. The rounded side is going to be the face. So see how rough mine is right now. It's very loose, which is totally fine. And then what we're going to do is start to flatten one side and pick whatever side's kind of the flattest. You can needle felt with your single coarse needle. I'm currently been working with a 32 triangle because it helps push a lot of wool and will make um, a really nice dense understructure, which we want. We want a very nice dense base to needle felt into and on top of. But you can also use something like a cluster of finer needles, any gauge finer needle. See how that feels for you to kind of flatten and compact like this and smooth. Because what I want to do is just keep needle felting my piece until I start to get the shape that I'm going for, which is going to be flat on one side, and then kind of this egg oval with, the egg oval is going to have a little more of a broad 
top along the head. So, and I'm going to needle felt it because I'm going to wear mine as a pin or a magnet. As I needle felt down towards the foam, I'm going to get it to taper down and flatten there. So notice the, the movement is just to go around the edge and start to tame it to taper down to a flat edge. Just work your way around. Don't stay in one place too long and don't, you know, make it too hard before you decide to do that, to taper it down. Because once you taper it down like this, then you can start to shape the sides. Uh, Olivia shares she's going to make hers into a keychain. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, you can certainly make it all the way, all the way around as well. I wanted to make some earrings and a necklace and I just never even got that far. Um, and here's my little, here's my little uh, one that I'm working on right now. He's a little old man, and he's got a little ways to go, but he's going to be furry, and he needs his arms and his legs, of course. Maybe some. <laughs> Maybe he could use some um, eucalyptus. Oh, for sure. Okay, so keep shaping yours and keep needle felting it, and here's what you want to do. We're going to jump ahead because I'm going to show you every part. We're not going to miss any part today. This is what we're going for right here. We're going to make this little, it's like a cabochon, right? It's kind of like a cabochon, but the thing I'll have you notice is that I make one side a little bit bigger and this tapers down a little bit. And that's why I said kind of like an egg, because sometimes at an egg, usually the bottom is a little larger and more round and the top is a little more tapered in. So it's like an egg sliced almost in half, maybe a little more than half of an egg. And this is going to be the top of the head and this is going to be the lower part of the head. So this is where I'll go before I add any other features. So I mentioned to you that um, in doing my koala study that, or when I was working on him, I realized that the face was kind of unique and I wanted to get that right. So what you notice, let's just pop up here and we're going to look at a um, we're going to look at a profile of a, of a real koala besides just my koala. Let's look at a profile one, in. Um, yeah. Oh. oh, good. Okay, so notice how they're, see that big slope, how their face, the top of the head is kind of broad, kind of like this little guy. The top of the head is kind of broad, and then it slopes down. The other thing you'll notice is that their nose is like right on that slope, and let's, the nose is like right on that slope and then just kind of ditches, ditches down um, and terminates like in what becomes their top lip. So they don't have much of a top lip. The top of the lip is the bottom of the nose and then they have that little chin part. So I think that's what's interesting. We, sometimes people tend to make their face more like a bear, but what you see is that big slope, broad head. Sometimes it's even a little knobby right here, and the eyes sit in kind of a funny spot too. So it just makes them so darn cute. <laughs> so the thing that I do is I'm going to build up a nose on this, a, a nose plate, and I'm going to show you how we do that um, so that we're going to build our whole nose on top of it. I'm going to take a strip of wool right here, um, and you're going to have enough wool to get this wrong if you need to do it a couple of times, but I am going to roll it in a little bit so I have kind of a little noodle, a little, and then I'm going to fold this in because now I'm making a little bit of bulk, and I'm going to fold this up, and sometimes I add another little bulk of wool right into here, so I'm going to tack this down for a second, I'm just going to hold it down with my felting needle. I'm going to grab a little bit more wool because I want a little bulk right in here. And you can do that however you like. Okay, so now what I have is this bulky thing and that we are going to make a nose platform. So my rule with this is if you can squish it down then you can needle felt it to that level of squish. And this is what we're going to do. It's a little more than halfway down uh, the sphere. It's more, it's right here. Whoops. We're trying to hold this all one-handed. So it's, it's a little past the halfway point where the bottom is going to be. So if you can squish it down, then you can needle felt it to that degree too.
And how so, firm does your ball need to be before you start adding the nose? I, I like it firm. So here, I'm going to show you in just one second before, because if I let go of my nose now, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first thing I'm doing is just anchoring down the two sides. If anyone's done the doll felt along with me, that's going to seem very similar to the doll felt along. And then I'm going to needle felt down this little platform right there so that that's kind of it's kind of flat and I want this to we're gonna make this fairly firm too so to answer the question how firm is your ball well I would say look I am like squishing it really squishing it and it doesn't flatten all the way so you want it fairly firm if we do our firmness test this is rare medium well done very well done it should be at least probably towards the well done somewhere between medium and well done so how how does this part of your hand feel when you push these fingers together that's kind of where I want it in between these two okay so we're gonna needle felt this little nose platform on and the first thing I do is just anchor it in place and then I'll take probably my fine needle and let's see if I can show you the angle needle felt this down flush so that you have like a little you have a little platform right there And y'all just ask your questions as you go. They are, they are really helpful. Everybody learns from your questions. And if, if you're having fun and you think you want to give us a try, give us a like. Maybe consider subscribing to our channel. And uh, remember to put your hashtag koalamates if you pick up the kit. All right, so I have pulled off a bit here. And you can just smooth that back. And what you're going to want to do now is start to shape this and get this stuff needle felt it down into a bit of a draft stage at first all this loose stuff you can use your cluster this is a just a little cluster of 42 it will allow you to tack things down without shaping it too quickly or too drastically and then we can further take out this girth by starting to needle felt into the nose we want to flatten it to some degree and you can make yours smaller and build up on if you want. I just tend to add a bunch of bulk and then I'll take it away. Sculpt it down and compact it. What size needles are you using? This is a cluster of 42 triangles. So the needles themselves are very fine, but all together they, they have a really nice um, compaction ability without being too extreme like a single needle. If you put too many coarse needles together, you get a lot of resistance and it's hard for them to actually pass into the wool. But using finer needles in a cluster makes it a little bit easier. I, I do like it as a sculpting tool, not just a finishing tool. Okay, so this is what we're starting to create. See this little um, nose bridge and platform because the eyes kind of sit off of that. You want to keep needle felting that and compacting that until it is a really firm foundation. We're going to be putting our eyes in here and we're going to be putting our nose on top. So you want this to be pretty firm. It doesn't need to be rock hard, but it needs to be pretty firm. So I'm going to jump to one that I felt it on a little while. And I know this is white. It's a little challenging to see. But keep turning your piece around and round so that you can see the little slopes and the little planes. Now, you can go whatever direction you want with this, but what I like to do now is start to cover the face in the color. And the first thing you're going to be doing is creating some, these are going to be some little bands that we use in a couple of places on the koala, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So these are, what we're creating are these little fine ridges and fine lines um, so that you have what would look like a skin a skin fold and you'll see what I mean in just a second so you're going to want to create a couple of these and they should be pretty thin here's what you'll do take a longer ish strip of your batting so maybe this is about 10 inches or 8 inches long maybe and I'll peel off a full thickness of the bat so our batting is about this thick all on its own you didn't split this thickness, right, Ann? You pulled it for me. And then I want you to go ahead and split the thickness so that you have a thin, you have a thin half thickness of the batting. I like to use a skewer. You could use a ruler or whatever you like. And I'm going to put it right on this fiber in the middle and fold it over so that I get a nice sharp line. And then you can take the skewer out. And you can put the skewer in place 
so that you don't poke your fingers um, because what we're going to be doing is needle felting right along this little ridge right here. So start with your real fine needle because what we don't want to do is dig it into the foam. We're just creating a nice little flat uniform piece. Uh, Melanie and Allie are shared that they're excited for their kits. They're in the mail now. And <laughs> so sweet. Thank you all so much for everybody who's participated, whether you get the kit or not, if you participate in some way. Um, heck, even if it just inspires you to try felting, that's, that's good too. Okay, so sorry, you can't see my needle moving. We're kind of zoomed in because I want you to see everything. So after a little bit, notice I didn't felt very much. Just peel it off and flip it over and do the other side. This is going to be one of those things, and notice I'm not going very far. I'm only going, you know, I don't know, a quarter of an inch in. We're not going in too far. About a quarter of an inch is all you need to achieve what I'm trying to get you to achieve. And what you're going to do is flip this thing back and forth. Let's say, you know, try at least two sides on each side. You want that well felted with all of this stuff loose. So this should be flat. And after you flip it over a few times, Use our, use our little cardstock trick. Um, so I just have a couple of postcards here. Use our little cardstock trick and you'll put your fiber in between the postcards. I share this time and, time and again because it saves your fingers. But you'll put your fiber between the postcards and now we're going to just needle felt right in here. Postcards, cardstock, old greeting card, business cards, it doesn't matter, but a postcard is a little bit longer and it will allow you to go. So what you're going to do is just poke right in here and make that a little bit flat. You don't want it really fuzzy. So this part is like a preparation part and you can take a little bit of time doing it, but it's so worth it. So if you're making a few of these, make more than you need so that you go through it, needle felt the edges and needle felt both sides until you end up with something like this. Okay? So we have these long strips and we're going to use them for a few things. Here's, here's the first thing we're going to do. One thing I noticed on the little koalas is that when you look at their nose, it's like the nose is kind of inset into their fur a little bit right there. So, Anne, can you show us one of our pictures? Um, <clears throat> So what I'm going to do is take, yeah, so what I'm going to do is just take an end of one of these pieces and I'm going to decide where that nose is by putting this little cut on there, so this little piece. So I am actually going to cut it and this is not, this is the reason not to felt the whole bit um, that way, meaning all this, you leave it loose and it's going to be great for blending. So I'm going to take this little ridge, all I need is the ridge right where the top of the nose is going to be and I'm going to needle felt down this. It's not so felted that you can't attach it. Just trust me on that. Brenda says, I love the postcard trick. <laughs> it does save your fingers a bit. That's cool. Okay, so we're going to needle felt this down. And once you do this piece, now you have like the major piece that I want you to get. Um, all of this. I, uh, some koalas have this little area white on their face and some don't. Some have a little bit of pink. You know, some are a little more brown and some are a little more gray. It doesn't matter. We're just going for like the essence of koala here. So this is going to give us our little ridge there of fur. And then we're going to cover the rest of the head with the MC1. So for those who are brand, brand new, remember to use your hashtag never felted because uh, we want to know if this is your first time seeing felting or what. Um, okay, so we're going to take some of our MC1, and it doesn't take a lot, but what we're going to do is piece it over the head. I'm not going to cover everything because I don't need everything covered. So I like to do this in a few passes. Um, mostly I want to get all where the eyes are going to be, and I'm going to leave the nose open. So all I did was wrap a thin layer around the head, use your... Uh, I would use this uh, tool, the cluster tool, for that. I'll move this guy over here maybe. There, okay. I'll um, use this cluster tool for that. And we're going to go back of that ridge that we put there on the nose and just tack this down. You want it to be really uniform and tidy. There's no reason to rush. 
especially whether you make it a keychain or a pin or a magnet, people are going to pick it up and look at it all the time. So the best thing to do, even if you decide to make it furry, is to get this base fiber compact. Because if you want to make it furby, furby, <laughs> if you want to make it furry, my suggestion is to do that by adding fiber onto the top later. Okay. Patty asks, could we put the color on the nose before attaching the ridge? You could, um, but I didn't want, there was, for me, there was no reason, oh, you mean the black? You could, but that this tells me where to start the black and where it's, for me, it's just a guide. So you definitely could put the black on the nose before this if you want. It's totally up to you. I mean, you know, everybody is so brilliant. You know, don't be shy to try what makes the most sense to you because that's what I do. <laughs> I just do that, you know, what makes the most sense to me. So here's what you're going to do. Just continue tacking this wool down just like you see me doing. You can even do the back if you, you want to, you know, just to complete that part. And we're going to cover it until you get to basically this. So this is my little step right here is you want to kind of, I like to leave the nose open and this underneath part open right here, okay? All right, so now I'm going to get the black on the nose. We actually chose coal, as the gals mentioned, because um, it seemed a little more natural. Uh, their noses aren't really shiny, they're a little bit flat. Um, and we this just made a little more sense to us. So we went with coal, and they do, we do give you a pinch of black so you can add accents where you want. So now I know where my nose is, and I'm just going to start needle felting right in this little ridge that I created. Just all I did was peel off a little bit, and I'm going to poke that right down in there. Um, you can fold it back over if you want a real nice clean line. Oh, Donna Bellinger shares, thank you for sharing all of your techniques. It gives me courage to attempt things oh, I never dreamed I could do. That's so fun. Thank you. Now, the one thing I noticed was that when I looked at the profile of the koala, and I, you know, I'm not great with realism. I'll be the first person to tell you that. So this is always a challenge for me. But when I looked at the profile, as you turn the head a few different ways, and let's look at this guy too. Um, is it almost feels like there's like a straight line down of color. Like if you look at it, it's almost like that color runs almost in a straight line down the side of the nose. And so that's why I just kind of pull it like this and then we'll guide it. And you can always add more along the side if you want or take some away. You see? Okay. You can always add more if you want or take some away. So right now all I'm doing is getting color on the nose and see where it, like this side is comparatively thin in fiber that I had. Well, just put it on now before you tack it down. I mean, just, just drop it right in there and guide it where you want, and you can always change it. About how big will the finished head be? About this big. This is our little model. This is what we're working on here. Now, you know, the thing is, I noticed as I was looking at koala faces, how they vary. The koala faces vary. Some have a flatter face. The baby's faces seem to have a little bit less character and just overall high adorability factor, <laughs> adoro factor. Um, you know, some are a little more hairy than others. Some have like pinkish in their nose and on their lips. Some have pinkish in the ears and some don't. You know, I think you just look at a bunch of pictures and do what feels inspiring to you. Now I'm going to go ahead and wrap this uh, black underneath and bring it, I'm going to round it out just a bit so that there is a termination to the nose. And remember, if you don't love it, you can always add more onto it. You can even add bulk onto the end of the nose with, you know, rolling the same color and making a little mound there. So get your nose in place, even if it's a draft nose. And then this will help you see where to get the rest of the color on the face. All right, I think we're doing pretty good on time. Okay, cool. Angelina says, thank you, Marie. Nancy <laughs> says, thank you. Diane Aww. says, Marie, you are such a great teacher. You all are so sweet. Thank you for participating. I can't wait to see your koalas. The Waffa birds have been just mind blowing this year. <laughs> Cows still popping up and hats from that project and Valentine's too. So we love seeing what you all make. Now, remember, you can keep working on this, but notice I haven't really shaped the nose uh, platform yet. 
And um, I'm a bit cockeyed, y'all. Some of y'all know that already. Like, I see the whole world at an angle. So I will do everything crooked and then have to go back and fix it. And that's just Marie's world. <laughs> that's just the way of it. So what I'm going to do now is shape this in a little bit more. But the first thing I'm going to do is get just a little more color right here now that I have the nose in place. And if you use something like our batting, well, then you know all you have to do is pinch off little tufts and you can just patch it right over and it won't show. If you're working with uh, a long staple roving like the New Zealand Coriadel or something, that's not going to be quite as easy to get a seamless patch. Um, and we know that. So if you're having a challenge, you might look at what's the fiber that you have. Um, and again, this is just a short staple and crimpy. So I can just patch that right on. And what I like about it is then I'll blend a little more into that muzzle real naturally. And it won't look like a real hard line. So I'm just going to tack it on this way. First, I tack. Notice I'm going in this direction and not this direction. If you go this direction, you tend to create a ridge. And what I want is just a real gentle blending of those fibers. And if you don't love your blend, just tack a little bit of white on top of that. So we're going to flatten this down, and you're going to repeat that on the other side of the face. You're going to do that on both sides. And then we're going to start to shape this muzzle a little bit and create an eye socket. Oh, Mary says, it's very interesting to see how you do the nose ridge. Those details are so helpful to oh. achieve a realistic look. Oh, I'm glad that you all like it. I know that I, I've, I've taken the long way around, and this felt like this felt a little bit more quick than my first attempts at doing it. Um, so you're going to shape both. You're going to shape both sides of the nose, cover both sides with the wool. I want to show you everything, so I'm going to jump ahead. And then we're going to see where do the eyes go. Now, when you look at the eyes, and I'm going to show you this guy, the eyes sit a little little forward and not back and not too high. They seem to sit just like real close to the nose line. Will you show us one more picture, Anne? And let's look at this guy sideways too because he's so cute. He's got so much pink in his face. Um, let's look at him then. Um, okay, so see where the eye is in relation to the nose, the top of the nose. And then let's look at this guy real quick. Um, and it looks a little different when it looks a little different when they're facing you. So they, it is kind of close to the nose, and that guy's face is a little more smashed compared to the other one, you know. But um, the eyes will sit right up here, kind of near, near the nose and close to the top of the nose. So what I like to do uh, for the nose is draw, I mean the eyes, is draw a nice deep hole and start to create an eye socket. Don't worry about it if you don't get it just right the first time. I think these little koala faces can benefit from a lot of shaping um, and turn and twist and turn yours until you just love how it's shaped. But you're going to draw, when you do eyes, just create a really deep eye socket and do them both at the same time. And then the glass eyes we've chosen for this are a seven millimeter brown. Now the koala eyes seem to be a very dark brown with a very large, like the pupil seems very large and this seems like more brown than theirs do. So I'll show you how we get around that. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is cut this glass eye and um, cut it to whatever length you want so that it doesn't go you know, all the way out the back. And you wanna cut it at a really sharp angle. So I'm using these um, cutters and I'm going to notice that the angle I'm going to cut it like that so that I get a real nice point on that and hopefully I can drive it in and if you can't then just go back with your needle and poke it in again. So find your placement, see how you like it, use glue if you want um, Use glue if you want, and you can use that now and then let it dry or use it after. But what I do is I'm going to put a little bit of that coal right behind the eye now that it's in there, and it's going to darken the brown a little bit and just give it, it's going to make it look a little bit darker than it is. You could paint the back black or even a very dark gray if you wanted, but this is a, a bit faster. So all I did was drop a bunch of gray down there, and I'm just going to guide it around with my needle and it's going to give like a nice darker base to that eye and make it not look so light. So then we want to give them eyelids. And you've already done the work for the eyelids. Here it is. This is how I do the eyelids. And this is just easy for me and you might find another way, but an eyelid is interesting because it's just like an opening in the skin, something that opens and closes. So the first thing I do is take this long strip that we have and I'm going to 
um, tack it right down here in the front corner of the eye. Their eye, um, their eye seems to open kind of at this cute, sweet little angle. So play with that so you don't have like angry koala. <laughs> but I just wrap it tight against the eye and then I'm going to tack it down at the back, right here. I'm not needle felting this part yet. I'm just tacking the points. Bridget has a fun, has a koala fun fact for us. She shares koalas from the north are smaller than southern koalas, while southern koalas have thicker fur and are more brownish. Oh, very interesting. That's really fun to know. That's fun to know the difference. Okay, so check this out. We already have that started, and you can decide is your eye in far enough, and you can always build up more on the face if you want. So I have those tacked around, and now I'm going to bring this around. I'm going to bring it all the way around and just take it the whole length of the eye a little bit past so I have room to needle felt it in and then I'm going to cut it. Diane so. asks, could you make your eyes out of wool? You certainly could if you want to. We're including one set of seven millimeter glass eyes and one set of four millimeter glass eyes for the, the little bear like I'm wearing um, in the kit. Okay, so now you get to tack this down. And the eyelids are actually barely visible, but they are there. So this looks difficult at first, or it looks like it's hard to wrangle, but just get the basic structure of the eyelid in place. And then I tack all this fiber down, and then I'm going to sculpt that eyelid open. I'm going to sculpt it to how I want it. Oh, I had another bear. I'm jumping. I'm kind of jumping out of sequence, so I'm going to show you some different some different parts, and we'll bring our, our little guy all together. Okay, so he looks kind of old and sleepy even here, so now you just can open his eye and sculpt it to more of an open look. But you have a real nice, you have a real nice non-fuzzy eyelid, and that's the benefit of doing the, the little edge like we did, is it gives you a non-fuzzy eyelid. Okay, now just continue to shape that however you want, and remember you can patch over anything that doesn't, that doesn't work for you. And you can needle felt right into it here. Cool, okay, so there we go. Now we have our eyes, you're gonna do, do the same thing with both eyes. Let me show you how we do the lower part of the mouth, and I'm gonna have to jump over, um, because I forgot I had another guy working. Okay, so here's a guy. He's only he's only half done. So let's do him. We'll just we'll just use this guy. We're a little bit further on. Let's do the lower part of the mouth. Um, and the lower part of the mouth we're just going to create in our core wool. Take a tiny strip, and we are going to make a little lip. So all we're going to do is fold it down. We want a nice little dense piece. Um, so before you go to put it on your bear, hold it in place there and then needle felt it. And you're going to needle felt it inside to, to make it compact. You're going to needle felt it outside. You don't want it flat, you just want it compact. So needle felt the edges. Make it bigger than you need it so that you can tuck it under. And what we're going to do is we just want a little bit of bulk right here. The mouth is little and tiny. We're going to cover up the rest with, with more skin. So you want it to be, it sits right underneath the nose and it's going to go right underneath here. It's very small. So you can put some dark in the mouth now if you want or you can wait. So I go just inside here, tack this down, tack down each side, tack this down. Okay, now if you have more wool than you want to deal with, you can trim this off, like on this side. You just wanted to kind of get that mouth shape into place. So you can trim it off if you don't want to deal with it. The reason you don't want to tug on it so much is because we folded and needle felted so much of the edges. So if you pull on it, you're likely to just pull out your work that you just got into place. Oh, Maureen says, he's coming to life so nicely. <laughs> Sweet. Now this, their lip is like a tucked under here, you know, it's like, 
under there. It's not sticking way up. It's not level with the nose. It really does seem to be underneath and sometimes they do look like they have a little bit of a smile. So if you want to turn that up, now you can. I, I purposely didn't make this one cartoony. Those of y'all who have felt it with me for a while, you know, it's I, I like to go there and I like to make things really playful and cartoony. But for this particular project, I really wanted him to be more towards realism, a little more towards realism. So, um, Hence, I'm trying to follow the, the shapes that I really see in these little guys. Okay, so we kind of have our, our bottom lip in place, and mine looks like he has a smirk because I don't have this wool on over here, but let's get that into place, and I'll show you. We use one more of your little um, skin ridges that you created. Get this into place. Uh, we're going to use those little skin ridges that you created to finish out the fur on his face and build up a little more bulk. So how many of you are going to make one? I want to hear from how many people plan to make one. Just leave us a little note in the chat box here, or if you're watching the playback, give us a thumbs up, if you will, and leave your comments or even your questions, because we always come back and check those out. Okay, so here we have his little face is starting to come together. We want to come back to our little uh, ridges that we created. And um, I noticed that some of them, it's kind of like their fur. There is sort of like a ruffle in their fur here, if you will. Some of them are more pronounced and some of them are less pronounced. So what I've been doing is taking this edge, I fold this under. So you have one little fold here. That's going to go like right here and it's going to come down just to the middle right here. So just follow me on this. We're going to go. It's going to come like right underneath what's that little mouth part and come down. Oh my goodness! So many of our felting friends are gonna are gonna make some. I'm, I think I, I think the counts up to like twenty five, thirty. Oh, it's all, it just sweet! Keeps coming in. <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet. Okay, so notice that I just tacked that in right there next to that little lower lip that you created. Don't worry about this fold. We're gonna hide that, and then we're gonna tack this kind of around to the front. So we're just creating that little dimension in the fur, if you will. And we're going to do the same thing with this side where it comes together. I fold it under once, get to follow the angle, fold it under once, and we're going to kind of come here and needle felt that in. I'm going to cut this again right about here. And with this stuff, with this stuff, this batting, the MC1 batting, you can pretty much modify anything you, anything you put down. You can cover anything you don't like. You can add on top of anything you do like. You can take stuff away even if you don't like. So we're just creating these little ridges in the fur. And I want to leave plenty of time to finish off the eyes and the back for you. Okay. Now, where this is loose, oh, I seem to have not brought one of my tools. Uh, where this is loose, um, I'll bring it for you next time to show you, but where this is kind of um, a cut line and maybe it's really stiff. I have a little comb I'll bring for you next time, but you can even just use your scissors and just break that up. Break it up so that you can needle felt it down real smoothly. Okay. My guy's kind of rough and, rough, and, rough and ready at this point, but what you're going to want to do is go around and clean up any of these little edges and parts that you want. And just remember that what you can do is take a little patch of the MC1 anywhere you want to to make things a little more smooth and a little more blended. Anything you want to cover up, you can just cover up with a little patch or add a little bit of volume just by restacking the wool like this and make things um, blend in and look really natural. Oh, Carol says, these technique tips with the koalas are so transferable to any needlework project. <laughs> this is such a great tutorial. Carol, you are right about that because you'll see that time tutorial after tutorial, I show you almost the same, a very similar process. And honestly, it's what kept me from doing tutorials for years because I thought, well, I've already showed him everything. <laughs> There's like nine or 12 things in needle felting and you just repeat. That may not be true, but that's how it feels. 
that you're always transferring the same processes um, anyway. So it did keep me from doing tutorials for a long time. So build up the face how you want. You can see this little guy is kind of coming together. You know, uh, fill in this little area if you want. See how this little guy is kind of filled in there. Here you can see the white in his nose. And if you look at a couple of pictures of koalas, you'll see that some are like that. Some are very black. Some are pinkish. Some are, you know, very white. But let's jump to this guy's kind of like the state where our current guy is. The only difference is I went and added a little dark right here in his mouth. And I just tucked it, tucked it right in there. So that's pretty easy to do. Just needle felt that in. And I did put some holes in his nose. So when you get to this part of the, the nose, this guy, he, we didn't do his nose, make his nose a little blunt on the end. Try your cluster or try this and start shaping that nose so that it has the little blunt that you want. And then you're going to poke the holes with your 32 or your 36 and just notice the way their little nose looks and their little septum looks. Um, so you put those holes in. So this guy, his nose is done. It's a little blunt edge right there. And um, shaped, he's got his nose ridge, he's got his eye in place. We filled all this in and here is his ear. So I wanna show you how I'm doing the ears. I wanna show you how I'm doing the ears. Um, and so you can get yours kind of furry too. All right, so the, the trick with the ears, I think, is to use more wool than you think you need because you want, um, you want this thing to have not be loosey-goosey. Like notice the, uh, notice the strength in this ear and it's not coming apart and this part right here isn't loose or um, can't be torn away. I think sometimes when we're doing little thin parts like this, we don't use quite enough wool. Um, so you want to use enough wool that it has some dimension. So that's why I say make it bigger than you need. So I'm going to take just a big wide swath of this wool and it's probably more than it think you think you might need. Let's see how we do. I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to use my cluster tool and I'm going to start needle felting just right in the middle, right here. And then before I go too far, I'm going to turn it over and do the same thing. Now the thing with the ears is you're going to want them to have some curve to them. And so that's one of the reasons you usually need it to be a bit more wide and broad than you think you need. So you do hear me crunching into my foam, but I'm not letting it get attached. I'm just trying to make this nice and firm. I usually do both ears at the same time so that they're the same size. But then what I'm gonna do, now that I've just needle felted this a little bit, I'll go into the edge so that it starts to get some dimension. De what am I trying to say? Not dimension, but strength, some integrity, some integrity. And then I'm going to fold it and start to see how am I doing on my shape over here for this guy. So let's say I want him to be about the same size, but I want him to be about the same size, but I'm going to be curving him in. So I already know that I'm going to pull off some of this. I don't need all of this girth on the bottom, but I'm going to want to draw what these sides are down and start getting them a little more flattened too. So you can shape it and needle felt it at the same time if that's more comfortable. We just are gonna want that ear to have and be a nice, a nice flat on both sides. Oh, Crystal and Jan Lynn just shared that they just ordered their kits. Oh, so sweet. Thank you, gals. And I see someone in the UK asking, do we sell ours in the UK? We ship to the UK. I know the UK seems to be one of the more expensive places. So no, nobody in uh, the UK carries living felt supplies, but we do ship all over the world every single day. Um, and we'd be glad to ship to you too. <laughs> you too. UK too. Okay. So here we go. We're starting to get some shape on our ear. We're starting to kind of get the size that we want. I don't want to go too far down because we need this for attaching, but I think I probably can take away a little bit here because it's just a little bit bigger than I need. 
and I'm going to show you how we give this ear the real nice furred appearance. So make sure that you get those, um, those edges all tacked down and when you feel like you're kind of happy with it getting close to the size that you want, then we're going to pull out our long fibers. And we're going to be doing two parts to the ear. I do a front and a back of the ear. Let's see, I'll use this little bit that I pulled off. It has just a little bit of a ridge there. I'll take that. Um, so we're going to have the back of the ear and what I'm just going to call the front of the ear. I have no idea if these are real parts. They're just <laughs> the parts that I make up. So now's where comes in our New Zealand Corydale, which Holly showed you. And we have, the, this is the natural medium and the natural light. This natural light might look a little more white on the screen um, than it actually is. It is very, it does have a variety of colors in it, but it's just towards the light. So just pull off maybe a couple of tufts like this of white and the same in the natural or whatever you have that you know is working for you whatever fibers you have that might seem similar and you can make them more white or more natural it doesn't matter we're gonna blend them together some of them have very white furry some of them look very you know much like the rest of their fur and some of them don't seem all that furry at all this is a long staple so it's kind of interesting to blend but just blend it up so that you get it mixed up we're lightening the medium or medium, making the, the light a little less bright white. So just blend those together. And then, I, for whatever reason, I like to give myself a clean edge to start with. So I'm just going to cut off a bit, get that out of the way. And now I'm going to cut myself about an inch. I, I need to learn centimeters for all our friends across the pond. <laughs> they don't teach us. They don't teach us the metric system here, and it makes me feel kind of dumb that I can't speak. Right. And <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to make a couple of these little a couple of these little bits. Linda asks, could you use merino top for you the could, ears? Yeah, you could use merino top. I just find this stuff is a little more hairy, and that's why I like it. You know, it's a little more wiry, and merino top is so fine, but you certainly could. Use, use what you have. That's the longer staple length. So here's what we're going to do is along the outside of this ear, we're going to put this fur down. And don't worry that it's going further into the ear than you want. What we're going to do is you want to extend it further into the ear bed and off the ear than you think you want and it does kind of fan around so then just do whatever you can to initially tack it into place it matters not but you just don't want to go in too far see so leave this part loose so now just get all the way around and get it attached and you can if you were needle felting down more of the ear still wait because you don't want to tack it down in too far. Well you can, you could cover it up with dark or with brown if you want. But if you already have the color inside the ear then don't go too far in. Okay so now the ear is already looking a little furry and if you don't want this in there or if it's going in too far by not tacking it down now you can just trim it away. Or you can put a little bit of dark over the top or pink or whatever. All right. So that's the outer part of our ear. Don't worry about, see the back looks fuzzy. You can trim it off or you can just needle felt it right back through. It doesn't matter because you're going through to the fuzzy part, back through to the fuzzy part of the ear. So this ear doesn't need to be pristine and we're not needle felting through some perfect pink bunny ear. You know, these are fuzzy ears. So that's the inner part of the ear. And then I'm creating a secondary part to make it look a little like this, a little more natural. So now we're going to do the same thing to this bit. You can always make it furrier than you think you need because then you can take it off. Now this one, we're only going to go down about a quarter of an inch. Some is always going to come off anyway in your grooming, so you can put down a little more than you think you need. Is this helpful? If this is helpful to y'all, will you give us a thumbs up? Give us a like on this video if you think that this that this is helpful. Um, we so appreciate your your live comments, but give us a thumbs up or maybe leave a comment. Those who are watching the playback, leave a comment down below. And by all means, we hope you'll subscribe. We like to do this on Wednesdays. We do hope to post more videos than Wednesdays this year, but 
We'll do our best. <laughs> if we can do once a week, we'll be doing pretty good. Okay, so now we have kind of our inner ear and our outer ear. You don't, you may not need all of this, but here's what we're going to do. I'm going to loosen this stuff up a little bit, and we're going to kind of shape the ear before we put it onto our little koala. We have a tendency here in the States, we like to say koala bear. I don't know why, but we do. We like to say koala bear. So I like to get mine kind of shaped in advance, if you will and get it to kind of where you think you want it and then we're just going to needle felt it right down onto the head and notice that we're needle felting into these you know fluffier bits and using all of those for the shaping so the ear you want the ear to have that strength and integrity here and so that's why you have all of this lip uh, that that you created and we'll shape them more once we get it on so get it just get it tacked down and in place uh, Gemma says, this is awesome. I love all oh. the detail that you're putting into your work and how easily you've broken it down. Oh, I'm you to got... felting but totally hooked. So sweet. Thank you so much. I know it's 3 o'clock. We're just going to run a few minutes over, even though the fairies are waiting to give away prizes. I just want to finish this with you to show you how to do this ear. So get the bottom and the top of the ear. Notice these shapes on your koala, you know, where they come on the koala so that they have that, it has that real cute look. And... Uh, needle felt in the inside too so you're just going to tack the whole thing down and give it so it has a real nice shape and integrity and then this little front part is going to go right here now it's shorter so what you can do is trim it and you can trim it in like this so you just want it a little bit wiry pull those bits off and uh, we probably don't even need all of this but I do like to attach it I'm going to go I do like to attach it to the top of the ear. I'm actually going to take a little bit of mine off and we're actually going to blend it to the top of the ear. So go, go with me here. I know it looks really messy, but we're going to snug it right up to the top of the ear, get it in place. You can use your fine needle if you want at first and needle right through the top of that ear ridge, right through the top. Scoot it down so it's not too high up. Um, meaning it's not covering up this whole ear. So pull this back so that there is some distance between what I'm calling the inner ear and that outer ear and tack this down. Could you use a reverse needle to help to make the ear fuzzy? No, this is, well, first of all, so the, the question was, can you use a reverse needle to help make the ear fuzzy? The reverse needle is going to pull out whatever's on the inside. What's on the inside is the same short staple and it's just going to undo your felting in this case. So no, it's not, it's not really going to work. My suggestion is to, to put, if you want it to be furry, put the fur on. There's, there's the, the reverse needle pulls stuff up from the inside, but we have put down a short staple already. So there's my, there's my ear tip and you can see, then you're going to just go around and kind of groom, groom the ears and get them to the length and the size that you want, where you want everything. Remember, you can just trim stuff away if it's more than you want or furrier than you want. But I think those ears look pretty good and wild and but, and too bad I didn't get the eye, the eye on this one. I'm sorry about that. So um, the last bit is just to put a pin on the back. And when you get to that point, all I did, and I didn't bring in the extra pins, but you can stitch this on the back, or all I did was run some wool underneath there and you can put more and you can basically staple that pin down with the wool. Now you could also put a piece of wool felt like or other fabric on the back if you feel more comfortable and you could even use a, um, a magnet if you feel more comfortable uh, instead of this pin back but basically I'm just putting wool down and there's little holes in there for stitching so you can needle felt through those holes and all around the pin. Rather than just glue, don't use just glue. Use Consider using um, thread, consider gluing it maybe to some other felt and then securing that felt to the back. Um, but I would say, even if you just staple it down with a whole bunch of wool like this, then it'll look real natural and really sweet. So then your pin is ready for wearing. And quick, 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 before we go, uh, the gals are going to come back in. I'm going to show you. This is the one um, that we'll make next week. So this was the guy that I was originally going to make, and we'll make a little full body pin, and I'll show you how you can use the same kit to make him. And maybe if we're 
good with our timing, we can get to a point this year, and it won't be in the next couple of weeks, but where we can finish our fuzzy koala and make a whole fuzzy koala. So if you would like to see that, I hope that you'll give us a thumb, subscribe, and let us hear from you. Maybe put hashtag fuzzy <laughs> koala down below. I know we've asked you for a ton of hashtags today. I really want to thank you so much for your attention. Thank you for participating. Thank you to everyone who became a hashtag koala mate with us uh, and will continue to during the fundraiser. Like I said, um, during this fundraiser, 100% of the proceeds of the kits that you get will go directly to WWF. Uh, .org.au until we raise what we've set is an internal goal. My husband and I have committed that even if the fundraiser doesn't raise that amount that we have set in a timely fashion, that we'll make up the difference. So we'll make sure that we meet that goal no matter what. <laughs> Y'all come on in. So we're going to give away some prizes. And thank you all so much for felting along with me today. The fairies are back. We're going to give some stuff away. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to see what some folks are saying. So tell me, what, what's up with our prizes today, Anne? What do we got? All righty. So prize number one is an eight-ounce bundle of our core wool roving. Woohoo! This is my favorite stuff. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and prize number two, an MC1 studio pack. Very nice. So you get to choose. So if we draw your name, we're going to draw three names right now. And if we draw your name, then you can let us know which one you want. If you've never ordered anything with us, we're going to give you a link to go to our website and you can use the contact us form to send us all your info. But if you're our customer, well, we'll just send it to you. Let's draw some names. Yay. All right. Sure. Up, up. This uh, one. Up, this up, one. Up, up. Oh, <laughs> oh, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Jamel Campbell? Yes. Yay! 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 <laughs> Kayla? Ooh. Donna Bellinger. Woo! Yay! Yay! Donna! Here. And we've got Sharon Lombard. Yay! Sharon Lombard. Lombard, maybe. Lombard. <laughs> all right, gals. So you all win. One of the two prizes Anne showed you. Just let us know which one you want. You can use our CRM. You can email us. You can call us. Whatever. We just love to hear from you. That'd yeah. be great. Now, what else do you got, Anne? Why do you have another hat thing? Oh. Another oh. super duper fun stuff. So. A lovely one of our felting friends, Teresa Dudek, who is watching. Right Yay! Now. Hi, Teresa! Hi. Hi. <laughs> she is so generously. She wanted to be a part of the the fundraiser and also just share share felting with someone who hasn't tried it yet. Oh, this <laughs> so sweet. at the start of the broadcast, we asked you to post hashtag Never Felted. If you've never felt it before, we've gotten all of your names mm -hmm. and so now we're gonna draw for who gets two <laughs> koala mate kits so two names two names all right yes. two oh, names. names each one will get a <laughs> koala awesome. mate kit yes. Yes. yeah yeah so thank, thank you Teresa thank you Teresa <laughs> that's awesome man yeah. okay yeah. she's a benefactor okay, okay. I'm gonna set this Go down on. so I don't get confused okay. am I oh am I you, oh, I'm <laughs> gonna do it <laughs> <All> you. <laughs> I'm going in <laughs> Mary Elizabeth Old tool. Yay! Old tool. Yay! Very cool. Okay, one more newbie one more. newbie prize. One All one. righty. Second winner is Audrey Farthing. Yay! Yay! Congratulations, everybody, for your prizes. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you for being a hashtag koala mate. If you're watching the playback, <laughs> leave your hashtags and questions and everything, and y'all yeah. can come back and watch this. It's going to be up on YouTube here in a, just a red hot minute. Okay, y'all, right, thank fun. you so much. Thank we'll see you next week. Bye. 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 Well, I'm too next time. Yes. <laughs> okay, y'all, be good to yourselves this week. You